Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Anya Omai. In this video, I want to pick up where I left off a couple years back with my series called Second Life Photography Quick Tips. I wanted to get back into the flow of sharing some tips and tricks that I've learned or found over the years to hopefully spark some different ideas and techniques with photography and second life. So if you're new to my channel and you would like to get updated and notified about videos like these, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon to get notifications about any updates that I would have. In this video, I wanted to walk you through a super cool website called Art Breeder, how you can utilize the website itself, as well as how you can integrate it into your own Second Life photography. I first heard about Art Breeder through a Sims Tumblr page where they were using it to create a more realistic version of their Sims character. Funny enough, I honestly really didn't think much about it, except for that's pretty cool. Until I saw Daniel Salvatore Salvetti's project called Virtual Reality of SL. When I looked at the style of portraits that Daniel was doing, it reminded me of Art Breeder, but I couldn't be 100% sure. Daniel actually reached out to me and is super open about his processes, and he mentioned that the tool that he's utilizing is Art Breeder. He pays for the subscription of Art Breeder to be able to upload and utilize its functions completely, but then he takes the final image over to Photoshop to touch up and process the image further, because there are actually limitations within Art Breeder itself. Before moving forward with the tutorial, I first wanted to kind of give you an introduction of Daniel's project, Virtual Reality SL. I'll be posting a link to his website as well as all his various social media networks in my description box so that you can go over and take a look at some of the work that he's done as well as read more about his intentions and why he's doing this from his own point of view. As a summary, the portraits that Daniel will be doing captures what makes our avatars unique and the essence of them, but he'll be presenting it in a more realistic fashion. I absolutely love what he's doing because I've always been a strong advocate that our digital representations of ourselves are just as unique as who we are in reality. As of right now, Daniel is taking some free portraits to build up the initial stages of the project, but I do believe moving forward he'll begin charging for his services to offset the cost of subscribing for Art Reader. I think his free portrait time slots are completely filled up right now. But if you're still interested, be sure to check on his website for updates and future time slots. I also wanted to say thank you because Daniel gave me permission to make a video like this, which showcases how you can utilize Art Reader yourself. If it wasn't for him being so open about his process, I honestly wouldn't have even checked out the website. So thank you, Daniel, for being an inspiration for this video. For this particular tutorial, I wanted to note that I personally don't know exactly what Daniel's process is, and I can only speak to you about my own experiences with this tool. I already did a very simple portrait with Art Breeder on my Flickr page, and it utilizes a lot of the same processes that I'll be showing you today. But in this video, I'm actually experimenting if this method works on a more complex shot with a less obvious lighting situation. So it did require way more editing than my previous one, but I think that it makes for a more interesting video. So in the process of filming this, I actually learned a lot as well. So please bear in mind that there are a couple of times where I stumbled and got a little bit confused. So first off, Art Breeder, let me walk you through their website and what it does. It's actually super straightforward. You can read more about Art Breeder and their services on their website but it essentially just uses artificial intelligence to allow users to cross splice images together or what they call the process breeding. It works not only on portraits, but photos, landscapes, as well as animals. In our instance, we will only be touching on portraits. Art Breeder is free for you to join. And as a free user, you can upload up to three images and with downloads, you have a limit of five downloads of 512 by 512 pixels. If you want a more high resolution shot to download or you would like to upload more images, you're going to have to subscribe to their services. And I place the different pricing options that they have on screen so that you are aware of it. When you first create an account, one of the first things that you want to do is to look through their main homepage 
and see some of the images that have been generated by other users. Start saving some of the ones that you like, and these are going to come in handy when you're starting to test out their services. So to do that, you want to hover over the images on the website. And for the ones that you do like, just click on the heart icon, and these will be added into your collection. Over on your profile page, this is where you can see all the images that you have saved into your collections. And you also see this little upload tab. So this is where you can kind of look at the images that you've uploaded onto the website. Let me show you how you can upload your own images into Artbreeder. First off, click on Create, and on the page itself, select the Portrait category. This is going to show you two options of creating portraits, Compose and Upload. Compose is going to allow you to take existing images that you've collected and uploaded to start splicing and compositing it together. But if you're new, you might want to hit the Upload options to upload your own images. And this is where you can browse your own computer and upload your own shots into the website. Bear in mind, anything that you upload onto Artbreeder needs to be altered on their end to fit an algorithm that their artificial intelligence would be able to understand. What that just means is that none of your uploaded images are going to look 100% the same. There's always going to be some alterations so that they, you know, can process it. There's certain things that you can do to make sure that the website is able to process your images properly. What I found works best is to have a very clean shot of your avatar in a high resolution. This could be anything bigger than 1024 pixels, or you can go as big as you want as long as you fit their size upload limit. Try to take this without much shadows and lights. Originally, the images that I used to test the service out actually had no lighting or shadow information from Second Life, and that worked completely fine. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I tested out another shot, which I do personally prefer. I took a shot of my avatar with no lighting information, no background, and no hair, just a hair base so that the entire face can be seen, and this was what I used for this video. With uploads, you're going to have to wait for the website to process the image, and this waiting time is very dependent on how busy their website is. There have been times where I waited in a queue with 100 over images, and there have been times where I'm like 10th person in line, so it is fairly random. Even with the 100 over images, I found that I didn't have to wait that long at all. So I think as long as you're patient about it, it's going to be fine. You can utilize the other services in the meantime while waiting. Once the image has been uploaded and ran through their neural networks, this is how that particular image looks like. I got to this page by clicking on my profile page and checking on the Uploader tab. Once I click on the image that I want to check out, I'll be brought over to a page called Edit Genes. And this is where the genetics of your image is being calculated. In this area, you're able to edit the genetics of your image using the sliders that you see on screen. I'll just quickly mess around with some of them so that you can see what they do. I would say it's pretty straightforward, so just play around and experiment. It's very interesting to kind of go through each of them and see what it does. If you wanted to reset any of the sliders, simply click the X icon and it will reset that slider. Moving forward, at the top you're going to see two other pages for the singular image. You have children and crossbreed. Children are just randomly generated images that the website will kind of create for you. You can use the slider to determine how different you want this randomly generated images to be. If there's any children that you do like and you want to save into your collections, you can click on the heart icon and save it for later use. The page that I use the most is the crossbreed page, and I'm super excited to show you guys this. This is where you can crossbreed other images with your own. Click select an image, and this is where saving from the main website will come super handy for you to use. I've saved a couple images prior to this so that I can quickly select one to crossbreed my image with. Let's do this one that's super interesting and different. Once you select that image, the website is going to generate a baby from the two images that you crossbreed together. If you slide the top slider closer to your uploaded image, but slide the bottom slider to fit the style of the other image, you're going to see that it retains the face of your avatar, but the art style of the other image. Isn't that massively cool? I 
was so mind blown when this happened, like crazy. So anyway, if you do like the image that they have generated, just click on the save icon and save it into your own collections. Once you hit the save icon, you're going to see it pop at the bottom of the page. When you click that image, you're going to be brought back to the edit jeans page. So this is where you can alter that image to create an even more unique and interesting one. So on the screen now, I'm just going to do a couple different sliders to show you guys how awesome this feature is and how different the image can look by the end of your entire experimentation process. If you hit add gene at the bottom here, you're going to be able to add even more genetics to your image. And I believe these are genetics that have been generated by other users. So I've saved a couple that I find super interesting and I will just click on those add those genetics and you can play around with it even more. So that is in essence how Art Breeder works. And there is so many possibilities and it's just this endless cycle of fun that you can kind of go into for long periods of time. And I definitely went through that process. So here is where you can start to download your images. Go over to your profile page and look through all the images that you have saved and that you have played with and hover over each of those images. Over there, you're going to see this download icon. And if you click on it, it will just generate the image for you to download. Just bear in mind, depending on your account type, there's going to be a limit of how much you can download. So don't be too trigger happy with this. To access the images that you have sent for downloading, hover over these navigation icon, and you're going to see a button called image downloads. Click on that and those are all the images available for you to download onto your own computer. And now we are here in Photoshop where I have pre-taken a couple of shots in Second Life that I would like to use for editing. If you guys have watched my super long video tutorials on Second Life Photography, these are essentially the same images that I took over there. The only difference between that video to how I take my pictures now is that I utilize Black Dragon for my images. But the process is honestly identical in whatever viewer that you decide to use. I just prefer the look of Black Dragon photography now that I have messed around with it for a little bit. I've grouped up these images into the different functions that I need them for, and I won't be using all of them, but essentially these are some of the images that I think would be helpful. I have a base image that I will be using to composite those art breeder images that I have downloaded. I have a couple of images that I utilize for lighting information. I have a couple of images that I will utilize for shadow information. And of course, I have a couple of images that I have saved up for depth pass. And depth pass is just a way for me to add depth of field into my image without actually using depth of field in the viewer itself. So these are some of the images that I saved up from Art Breeder. I have a total of four of them. And I think through the editing process, I ended up only using three of them. I saved the different images for different reasons. Some of them, I really like the facial features of it, and that will be what I'm using to replace the facial features of my Second Life avatar. And for some of them, I saved it because I really like the skin texture and the skin details that it has. And so I wanted to utilize that as a guiding point when I'm editing the shot. You really don't have to save multiple images for this process. I just wanted to show you guys how I personally did it. Um, if you wanted to just utilize one shot, that's actually more than enough. So first things first, once you have placed these images into your editing document, you want to kind of isolate the face away from the background. So I'm going to use the object selection tool in Photoshop to quickly select out the face. The object selection tool is actually really intuitive and it can tell when something is a background and when something is, I guess, an object or, um, a subject really quickly. I'm going to do that, inverse the selection, and just delete the background from these different art reader images. 
I'm going to predominantly use this particular image to replace the facial features of my Second Life avatar. I will lower the opacity of this so that I can easily place it on top of my shot. And you can see that because of the angle of the image, there's still a little bit of inconsistencies and you're still going to have to adjust it to fit your Second Life image. So press Ctrl T to bring up the free transform tool. And this is going to allow you to easily kind of resize and reposition your image. So I realized that I really wanted to bring in a little bit of symmetry that the Art Breeder image did not have. So all I did to do that is to flip horizontal. So I have the image both facing, I guess, the left and facing the right. And I can easily just erase the middle portion to kind of create a more symmetrical image from my art reader. I really wanted to utilize this symmetrical image just for the lips of it. So I'm going to select out the lips, copy and paste it into a new layer, and then use the eraser tool to kind of wipe out the edges a little bit and put it into place. In order for the art reader image to fit your own Second Life shot, there's going to be a little bit of color adjustments that you need to make. So I go over to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation, and I will lower the saturation and the lightness of this. So essentially, you might not be replicating the same steps, but what you're trying to do is make sure that the color values and the colors that you're using are very similar to your Second Life shot. So you see in this instance, I really liked the look of the lips, especially because it has way more detail than the Second Life shot itself. So I will kind of just duplicate that and then erase out for the bottom lip and then erase out for the top lip. And that is kind of how I Frankenstein this into place. And I'm going to replicate this process throughout all the other facial features. And instead of trying to fit the whole face into your second life shot, it's always easier to do it feature by feature because then you have the most amount of control and you still retain the proportions of your Second Life avatar. So I'm going to do this for the nose, I'm going to do this for the eyes, and all of them are going to utilize the same process of using Control t Free Transform, which allows you to place it into place. <laughs> and then you would use Hue Saturation to kind of adjust the color values to fit your Second Life image. And you would use the eraser tool to really soften the edges and make it blend better into your Second Life image. What I notice after editing a couple of these art reader shots is that in order to keep the essence of our Second Life avatars, sometimes the best way to do it is to keep certain features very much Second Life. And I find that the eyes are one of those predominant features that if you kept the Second Life version of it, it still gives you that weird, uncanny Second Life look. And that is what I decided to do with this shot. So I erased out a lot of the eye portion of my art breeder, keeping anything that has to do with skin, but anything to do with the pupils or the irises of the eyes, I would keep it to my Second Life image. And here I really like the way that shadow is being casted on the art reader shot. So I also grabbed out the neck and kind of erased it and color adjusted into place as well. After I'm done adjusting all the facial features, it comes time to add some skin texture into my shot. So I decided to use the other two images that I saved out to essentially just grab out a couple of the skin texture, color adjust it into place. And for this other shot that I really like how intense all those skin details are, I essentially just grabbed out the entire face, free transformed it as close as possible as I can, erase out some of the features that I don't want added into, like the eyes, for example. And once I have that, because I just want to grab out the details, the way to do that is to go to Filter, Other, High Pass. Once you do that, you're going to have a grayscale image and you would set this to an overlay and it will essentially just sharpen your image. This is actually what we use to do sharpening in VFX as well. 
At this point in the image editing process, I have integrated the Art Breeder images into my Second Life avatar, replacing all the features that I want a little bit more realistic using the Art Breeder images. So this was how I accomplished the first shot that I did using Art Breeder. If I was doing a simple portrait like that, after this, I would simply go over to liquify and kind of move the facial features into place to be a little bit more natural with the shot. But in this instance, because I wanted to utilize more Second Life lighting to create a more dramatic portrait, I decided to do all that before going over to liquify. I'm just going to speed through this. If you guys are interested in how I do these methods, you know that I have a bunch of other videos that would really cover it in more detail. Essentially, I use the different layer options to either screen or multiply my layers. And that is how I can integrate Second Life lighting into this particular portrait. Liquify is a super useful tool when it comes to portraiture because Photoshop has a face aware liquify. It understands where the eyes, nose, mouth, and face shapes are in a portrait, and it allows you to kind of use those sliders to move around those facial features. I find that using liquify really helps to naturally set everything in place compared to if I kind of left it where it is and not do that. So for the rest of the video, I'm just going to kind of speed run it because a lot of it is just going to be Photoshop editing. A lot of it is me trial and erroring to see what works and what doesn't. I just think for the purpose of this tutorial, a lot of it I have kind of covered, which is how to integrate your Second Life image with Art Reader itself. And that is essentially the main concepts that you need to have, which is do it feature by feature versus the whole face. And that's going to kind of help you set everything a little bit more naturally. And what I felt really helped me kind of keep my image closer to Second Life versus Art Reader is utilizing all those passes that I did, which is for lighting and for shadow, because now you're using lighting information from Second Life. And that would overall just give you a more Second Life look versus an Art Reader look. So even though I'm not going to talk through the entire process of how I edit my shots, I hope that up to this point, together with watching the other videos that I have made, you can kind of get a gist of how you can do this yourself and give it a shot. See if you like the results that you get from Art Breeder. I really hope that you guys enjoy the rest of this editing process and I will come back to you when we are about to finish this video.
are at the finishing line of this edit. You can see that I have painted a bunch of things and I have edited this like massively. Um, I'll be perfectly honest, I edited this image twice because the first result that I got after kind of sitting on it for a while, I really disliked it. So I had to kind of go back and redo this for the video. Um, and it really helped me because I ended up realizing what I liked about the previous one and what I hate about it. So I hope you guys enjoy this whole process and that you've learned how to integrate Art Breeder into your own Second Life photography. Let me know down in the comments section what you think about Art Breeder. Do you think it is a cool thing to utilize or do you think it's absolutely freaky? Whatever the case may be, I hope that you have found this interesting. Until next time, have an awesome day and I'll see you guys in the next video.